In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit like one of the videos from the channel Let Me Know. If you're not familiar with Let Me Know, he's a documentary creator known for his exceptional editing and storytelling, the kind that keeps viewers hooked, even through videos that are over an hour long. Today, I'll be breaking down two specific editing techniques from his video titled The Unbreakable, Crypto's Code. We'll try to recreate those edits step by step only by using CapCut, so make sure to watch this video till the end and hit that subscribe button. Also, you can join my Patreon to get access to all the assets and the full project file of this video. All right, let's jump into the tutorial. First, let add a scan of a newspaper to the timeline. Scale and position it until the paragraph that you want to highlight is on the center of the frame. Then inverse the color by going to Adjust Menu. Go to Curve and turn the curve of Luma to upside down. Now, let's animate the newspaper using keyframes. Add keyframe on the first frame. Then move forward a few seconds. Add another keyframe. Go back to the first keyframe and reposition it for the starting. Now, right-click on the second keyframe and change it to Ease. So, it's gonna look like this. Now position the playhead at the second keyframe, then press Ctrl and B to split it. Go to Mask. Select Pen. Then select the paragraph that you want to highlight. Now, duplicate the layer, select the original layer, go to Mask, and select Inverse. So the duplicated layer here will show the highlight paragraph and the original layer will show the rest of the paragraph. Now, compound the duplicate layer. Then upscale it to check the masking paragraph has been done correctly or not. Then, change the blend mode to screen. Now, add the same newspaper to the timeline, but I only need the name of the newspaper, so I'm just gonna crop it. As you can see here, that the crop is not complete because of CapCut limitation. So, I'm just gonna continue to crop it using Masking Tool. Just head over to Mask, then select Rectangle, and crop only the name of the newspaper. Now, inverse the color again by doing the same step just like before. And don't forget to change the Blend Mode to Screen to remove the background. After that, let's animate them. Let's start with a paragraph. First, click Reset on the Transform to reposition the paragraph to its normal position. Add keyframe at first frame. Move forward a few seconds. Then upscale and reposition it to the center of the frame. Also for the header. Now, ease the keyframe. Now, I'm going to slide the keyframe slightly to the right because I think the duration is too short. Now let's animate the header appearance. For the header I'm just going to apply slide down in animation from the animation menu and set the duration to one second. So it's going to look like this. Now, slide the header layer to here to set the timing of the appearance. To make the highlighted text contrast with the rest of the paragraph, Add this black color overlay and position the layer above the newspaper layer. Now go to animation and select fade in. Set the duration to one second. Now decrease the opacity. So, it's gonna look like this. Now I'm gonna apply some effect to the newspaper. Head over to the effect menu and find chromatic quirk effect. Add the effect to the timeline and position the layer above the newspaper layer. Now, set lateral chromatic aberration to 56%. So it's gonna look like this. You can also add blur effect to make it more distinguished. To make the blur entrance smooth, you can also play with the keyframe on the effect. Mm -hmm. 
So it's going to look like this. Now for the finishing touch, I'm going to add a vignette effect. So let's add an adjustment layer to the timeline and position the layer to the top and increase the vignette on the adjustment menu. And that's how you make the first clip. Now, let's move on to the second clip. The first step to make the second clip is you have to prepare the map animation. So, head over to Google Earth Studio using your browser. I'm gonna use portrait frame, so first you need to uncheck the chain right here. Then set the ratio to 1080 by 1920 pixels. You can leave the rest of the setting and now click start. Now, go to your first location. For example, here I'm gonna go to Pentagon in Washington. To control the zoom in and zoom out, you can just play with your mouse scroll. So, here I'm gonna position the frame for the starting point. Then, add a keyframe. Move forward a few frames, then zoom it in to the target location. Then add another keyframe. So, it's gonna look like this. Now move forward. Then add another keyframe for the still position. Move forward. Zoom out the camera. Then, copy the coordinate of the altitude, and add another keyframe. So, it's gonna look like this. Now, move forward from the last keyframe. Then, go to the second location. I'm gonna go to the White House. Here, paste the altitude coordinate that we have copied from the previous location. Move forward from the last keyframe, then zoom it in to the second target location. then add keyframe. Now, select all of the keyframes. Go to animation and select auto ease to smooth the motion. So, it's gonna look like this. Now, after you've finished with the animation, go to render, and here you can pick the location of the render file and also make sure to select image sequence here for a faster rendering time. And after all of these, you can click start to begin the rendering. After the rendering finished, go back to the map project. And here we're going to take a 3D screenshot of each of the target location. But first, you need to delete all the keyframes. Here, let's change the perspective to 3D by holding the mouse wheel while sliding your mouse. And make sure that the building is in the frame. Now, click this button to take a snapshot. Do the same step for the second location. As you can see here, these two snapshots quality is not really good. But we can't complain because it's free, so it's reasonable. But don't worry, I have a solution to fix this. All you have to do is head over to ChatGPT, then import these two images and also write this prompt. Enhance these two picture with detail and realistic. And here are the results of these two images after being fixed by ChatGPT. Now, let's open CapCut. Before you make a new project, go to Settings and apply my settings here. After that, let's create a new project. Now, let's import the folder where you save all the image sequence that has been rendered. Open the folder, select the first image. Then, scroll down to the bottom and select the last image while pressing Shift key. Now, drag all of them to the timeline. If you click the play button, now all of these image sequence will play like a video. Now, select the last image and extend its duration for a couple of seconds. Select all of them and create compound clip. After that, go to ratio and change it to 16 by 9. Scale and position the map to the right side of the frame like this. Import the 3D snapshot of the first target location. In this case, the Pentagon. Recision the layer beneath the map layer. Scale and position it to the left side of the frame. 
Now, extend the duration to when the map pointing the other location. Add the snapshot of the other location, in this case, the White House, and you just have to do the same steps just like previously. Now, let's add a slight zoom in motion to each of the 3D snapshot by using keyframes on the transform. After that, go to Transition, and here I'm going to use a transition called Mix for the alternative transition, because what Lamino done with the transition is not very doable in CapCut. And this transition still looked good in my opinion. Now I'm going to add a wiggling line in between these two frames using an overlay. Just simply change the blend mode to screen to remove the background. So, now, it's going to look like this. Now, let's make the text animation. So, first I'm going to add a black color overlay for the background of the text. Go to mask and select rectangle. And now you have to reshape it like this. So, the text will fit inside this shape. After that, add a white color overlay. For this one, I'm going to use it as the stroke of this rectangle. So, make sure to place the layer beneath a black overlay. And now, I'm going to reshape it as well by using mask. Add a text layer. For the font type, I'm going to use Sura Black font. Then, compound the text layer. Now, let's animate them starting from the text. Go to Mask, select Rectangle. Add keyframe on the mask settings. Then adjust the mask until the text disappear. Now move forward, then adjust the mask until it fully appeared. Select the black background, then animate it with steps that are pretty much the same. Also for the white collar, it's still using the same step but the difference is that for the starting position, spare slightly of its appearance, so it's not fully disappear unlike the rest. So it's gonna look like this. And now ease all the keyframe. Select all of the text animation layer and compound them. Now, you just have to reposition it. Duplicate the layer to make another text animation. Then reposition it like this. Double click on the compound layer to change the text and content of it. And if the timing is not synchronized, we can fix it by adjusting the keyframe length. Now, go back to the main timeline. Then, I'm going to slide the second text animation layer to when the first layer animation has ended, for the timing of its appearance. Now let's apply the same text animation as well for the second location. First, we need to trim the layers. Then, duplicate them. Then snap this layer so there is no gap. Now, let's change the content of each of the layer. If the text is not fit within the box, 
you can simply decrease the text size, or for a better result, you can resize the mask at the end keyframe in both of the background and the stroke layer. Now, change the content in this layer. So, it's gonna look like this. Now, let's make the transition for the text. First, open the White House compound layer. Then delete all the keyframe of each layer. Open the second compound layer, then add a randomizer and animation in the animation menu. Set the duration to 1 second. Now, go back to the main timeline. Open the Pentagon compound layer. Now, trim all the layers at the maximum duration on the working area, which is the bright one right here. Open the second compound layer. Also trim the text layer. Then, add randomizer animation for the out animation. And go back to the main timeline. So, it's gonna look like this. Now, for the finishing touch. Let's add vignette effect using the adjustment layer. So, it's gonna look like this. And that's how you edit like Lamino in CapCut. Thank you guys for watching. Also thanks to my patron for supporting this channel, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.